Hollywood is a very strange and mysterious place. It's a land full of endless dreams, opportunity, and of course, conspiracy. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on this channel. Without you guys, we would not be able to do what we do. So from, from the bottom of my heart, a very, very massive thank you. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be talking about the Avril Lavigne conspiracy. Now, before we get into this story, I just want to make a couple of things very clear on this channel and my perspective of this story. My interest in this story is to try to figure out the truth and also to potentially start to maybe, maybe get justice for Avril if the worst has happened. But I just want to make it very clear that by no means am I saying that this conspiracy is fact. And if Avril Lavigne is still the Avril Lavigne from the very beginning of her life, then I wish her nothing but well. I remember when she first hit the scene, I always thought she was rather cool. I also want to make it very clear that after this story is presented, we will not be divinating on it. Why? Because Avril Lavigne whether she is still on this earth or not, is a sovereign person. She is a human being, just like you and me. We don't have her consent to be looking at this story through divination. I just want to make again that very clear, and I would encourage each of you not to pull cards again on anybody else unless you have their permission. All the things that we're going to be looking at in this story come from research observations of other people, and evidence to support the claims that the Avril Lavigne we see today is not the original Avril Lavigne who released her first album back in 2002. I also want to encourage each and every one of you to not send hate to anyone. I feel silly having to say this. Um, if, like, if, Perchance this conspiracy is correct. I have a lot of empathy and a lot of pain for Avril and a lot of empathy and a lot of pain for her closest friends and family who are not involved in this deception. If this conspiracy is correct, the person playing Avril Lavigne right now might potentially, in my opinion, be doing so against her own will. I don't know. And so I would really, really ask each and every one of you to hold each and every person in the story in your heart with compassion. Do not reach out to them. Do not send hate to them and allow justice to be served through law and order. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this conspiracy, as you probably guessed, the conspiracy is that the person playing Avril Lavigne right now is not the original Avril Lavigne and that the original Avril Lavigne committed back in 2002 2000 shortly after the release of her first album let's go avril lavigne was born on september 27th 1984 in belleville ontario canada the story goes that lavigne's family knew she had vocal talents by the time she was two years old and she was heard singing jesus loves me in the car on the way home from church Levine would reportedly spend her childhood performing at county fairs, and as she grew older, she began to write her own songs. Now, apparently, music does run in Avril's family. Her father, a man named Jean-Claude Levine, was apparently, or is apparently, a bass player at a local church called the Third Day Worship Center in Kingston, Ontario. Now, of course, I'm extremely suspicious of churches, and I'm not saying that there's anything to this. It could be that her dad was literally just playing the bass at, at his church. But as I was digging into Levine's family, I learned that her paternal grandfather was also in the Royal Canadian Air Force. So in in my suspicious mind, these are two controller businesses that her family happens to be in. And if the conspiracy wasn't what it is, which we'll get into, 
the details of this conspiracy, I probably would just kind of ignore the fact like no big deal. Granddad is just part of the Air Force. Dad just likes to play bass, reckons he's a rock star playing at his church. No big deal. But because of the conspiracies and because of the way that Levine took her own life, I have some suspicions. The story goes on that in 1999, Levine won a radio contest. Remember those radio contests they used to do back in the day? Maybe they still do them. I don't know. Don't really listen to the radio anymore because I'm like never in my car for that long of a period now. But um, yeah, they used to do like radio contests back in the day. And the prize was to perform with another Canadian singer named Shania Twain. Now, country music and Avril Lavigne don't really seem to go together, but through my research, it seems that that was kind of how Lavigne started. She started singing covers of country songs. Whenever I think of, I'm, I'm not a country music fan, being down here in the South, I just really can't stand country music, but I, it seems that there's actually a lot of country music fans from Canada, which I find rather comical because I think of Canada as just like a snowy tundra of just cold like cold and cold I, I guess being so far south i just don't ever think of there being hot days out in the pastures in canada where you're sweating and work in the field i guess that's why i always just think country music is a southern thing but apparently it's a pretty big thing in canada as well if you're from canada and you have you are a country music fan let me know so after Levine performed with Shania Twain, things would start to pick up for her. It was in December of that same year, in 1999, that she would be discovered by her first professional manager at a bookstore called Chapters Bookstore in Kingston, Ontario. I guess she was performing in a bookstore? I, I, I don't know. I mean... If you're a younger person watching this, yes, back in the day, they used to go and like perform in like malls and stuff like that, you know, a mall thing of ancient times. But, you know, the singer Tiffany, for example, was was famous or her label, her people would send her around to different malls in America to perform in the mall. If you're um a part of Apple TV, there's a great show called Physical that kind of documents the rise of aerobics videos and they have the main character in a mall teaching aerobics class and so when i saw this whole performance thing in chapters bookstore it kind of reminded me of that time and i guess the late 90s we were kind of leaving that generation of of sending your kids out to these local places to perform to get them noticed i mean this was before youtube this is before the 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 world went super world wide web you know, so I mean, I was 16 in 1999. I've laughed and I've said this before. When I was in high school, we had to use the freaking Dewey Decimal System. We The internet had started to come around, but we weren't allowed to use it because you couldn't trust it. And so we had to use a literal card catalog and go to the, the library and look shit up for our papers and books. It was like a damn, like scavenger hunt for information and i probably can still work a card catalog if i need to and even when i went to college uh, it was still especially the first few years of college we still were not allowed to use the internet for research i mean we could use it but we had to back it up with a book because still at that point the internet was sketchy like people weren't super sure if the facts information was right i mean we now know that there are hello fact checkers like we get that now but um but so for those young people watching to, to make a long story short to circle back performing at like a bookstore kind of was what people did back in this time and it worked because again this is how she got her first professional manager and maybe because she had just performed with shania twain she had a bit of like power to market herself as hey you know the kid from small town Canada who got to perform with the big Canadian uh, country singer Shania Twain is going to be here at our local bookstore performing. And so these people who thought, you know what, kid needs a manager, I can make money off of her, showed up and scouted her. Once she was picked up by her professional manager, her first professional manager, that's when things really picked up. Because of course, at this point, this is when she started recording a lot of demos to send out to different record labels. And, and it goes to say that her parents did build her like a mock recording studio in their basement so that she could work on her music and send her demos out 
I have told you guys before that I lived in Los Angeles for about six years after college. And my boyfriend at the time was in the music industry. Now, my boyfriend at the time was 15 years older than me. I don't know what to say. I have a thing for older men. Always have, always will. That's very normal for me to date someone 10 to 15 years older for a long time. Very long relationship. But because he was 15 years older than me, he was working LA back when I was still a kid. And he would tell me all the time about having to record little cassette tapes and mail them out to different record labels to get noticed. Now, again, they could still do things like this to this day, but I'm sure it's a little bit different with the internet. I'm sure they can just, you know, put a, a, a kid up on YouTube. Like, I think that's what happened to Justin Bieber. So they say is he just started performing on YouTube. And then that's where talent scouts will find people. But as far as the story of Avril performing in a bookstore, all that kind of stuff. Very normal for the time. Mark Joet, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, but that's how it's pronounced in my head, Mark Joet, who was the co-founder of a Canadian management firm called Network, sent Avril Lavigne to New York City in the summer of 2000. She was there to basically work and workshop with a producer called Peter Zigo. Now again, hope I'm saying his name right all these crazy names. Now, remember, she was born in 1984. So she's a year younger than me. So in 2000, she would have been 16 years old. So a 16 year old girl from small town Canada is now in the big city of New York, workshopping with a big wig in the music company in the music industry. This is when she was noticed and picked up by her record label who produced her again her first debut album called Let's Go in 2002. In 2002, Avril Lavigne was an 18-year-old girl. And some of these conspiracies do have to do with the fact that the way she looked in 2002 with the release of her first album has drastically changed over the years. Now, I say drastically changed, and we're going to talk about some of the little bit more um, suspicious changes, but I also just, to, to kind of keep the story grounded and logical, I, I do want to say, like, you change a lot from 18 to in your 30s. Like, I, I'm sure that if you saw a picture of me at 18, it would probably look like me, but not the me you see now. I mean, hell, I'm almost 40 years old. Of course, things are going to change. Some 18-year-old kids still carry a little bit of puppy fat, while some are super skinny. Avril Lavigne was very skinny at 18. Girl, I feel you. I've, I've always kind of been skinny. So I, I feel you on that. And I just want to note that if you look at her, it, not in a creepy way, but it, she still looked like a kid, right? Her body still was, was very childlike in a way. And now that she's in her thirties, of course, there's going to be some physical changes that we see. We're going to see her fill out more. I mean, look at Christina Aguilera. When Christina Aguilera first came on the set, I don't want to say on the scene because she was on the Disney Channel, but when she first released her album, she was super skinny. And now she's more womanly because she got older. She grew up. We also know that, you know, bone structure does change slightly. Usually by the time a, ch a, a person is in their early 20s, their bone structure might be like totally, completely uh, set. But but not for everyone. I mean, I mean, we do know that they have up to the age of adolescence to 23. And so if we look at it that way, some people aren't finished growing, really growing until like 23, 24 years old, especially if they are late bloomers. We also know that people's style does change. There are many kids who go through like punk rock phases and tomboy phases only to become more feminine when they get into their 20s. And that very well could have been what happened to Avril Lavigne. When we first saw Avril Lavigne come on the scene at 18 years old with her album, Let's Go, she definitely came across as a punk rock tomboy. A very feminine tomboy, but a tomboy nonetheless. In fact, one of the, 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 the things people noticed is that when she first came on the scene, she liked to wear her hair very straight and parted down the middle. Whereas later on, she started to wear her hair parted down the side and more wavy. 
Well, let me tell you something about the year 1999, 2000, for those who are super young. Back in that time, that was the style was to straighten your hair. Now, granted, I do still straighten my hair every morning, but I straighten my hair because one side of my hair will wave and the other side won't. And so I just try to make it look a little even. But back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, it was the style to literally have your hair paper straight, like paper straight. My mom used to tell me that back in the 70s before straighters were invented, they would actually iron their hair like put their hair on an iron and iron it because in the seventies, this was also the style was super straight hair. So we see these styles move. So it could be that Avril had her hair straight because that was the style back in that time. And she also was kind of tomboyish, but as she grew into a woman in her twenties, her style started to change because after the marker of the conspiracy started, which we'll get to Avril Lavigne started to wear more dresses. Now I, Listen, I prefer, I, I am very girly. Like I'm a very feminine girl. I like, I like doing girly things, but I'm also a tough chick. Like I'm also very athletic. I'm also very strong. I'm not afraid to go and get dirty. And I too will wear a lot of dresses, but the way, reason why I wear dresses most of the time, especially in the damn summertime is because it's hot as hell. I mean, you're sweating, you're sweating more than a horrid church down here. You know, it's, it's hot. And so wearing dresses for me in the summertime isn't so much about an expression of femininity as it is a practical tool to keep cool. So it could also be that this kid from Canada where it's cold, now living in Los Angeles, where it's hot, changed your style for necessity. I don't know. You know, I, I just want to say some of these things people notice aren't necessarily telltale signs that Avril Lavigne is not the original Avril Lavigne. But in saying that, in my opinion, some of the other signs are very significant. So this conspiracy actually started back in 2005. Now, her second album was released in 2004. And it was the shift between the 2002 album and the 2004 album that people started to scratch their heads and go, this is not the same chick. So back in 2005, which I was living in Los Angeles in 2005, and I don't remember this, but there were whisperings that something was going on with Avril Lavigne. But things really started to amp up in 2011 when a Brazilian blog titled Avril Esta Morta, hope I said that right, don't speak Portuguese, so I apologize if that's not how I said that, was released. Now, this means Avril is dead. And this is what really got people going, whoa. Because, again, as I said, there are other things that make one go this isn't the original avril when avril first became famous back in 2002 with her album let's go the hardest thing for her was the fame and i i do remember when her first album was released and it did seem that she was quite shy that maybe she was someone that didn't didn't like the fame, didn't like being looked at, didn't like having the notoriety. There's a story about how she got kind of assaulted in a Subway sandwich shop and one of her bandmates had to kind of fight back the paparazzi. And so she really started to struggle with this. She was allegedly also someone that already had the propensity to deal with depression and anxiety, which no shame in that same. I think a lot of us have that. And so being a young child, really a child at 18, and all of a sudden, especially from a small town, all of a sudden, sudden having your world turned upside down. And now everybody knows your name and people are like hounding you while you're getting your freaking sub at Subway Sandwich had to have been very overwhelming, could have been very overwhelming for many people. And so she really struggled with this. Like this was really, really hard for her. And so there's two different stories about what happened with her body double, Melissa. One story goes that her record label found Melissa to be her body double. Another story goes that Avril is the one who befriended a girl named Melissa 
I noticed that her and Alyssa had a lot of similar characteristics in the way that they looked and therefore Avril could put her on payroll and have her stand in as Avril's body double. It even goes that Avril kind of taught her how to sing a little bit so that if Avril was having a panic attack or couldn't go to an event or didn't want to go to an event, that Melissa could just step in for her. It is said that Melissa was happy in the spotlight and loved doing the job. And so over time, Melissa started to do things like red carpet events, uh, promotional events, and yes, of course, even perform for Avril if Avril was not ready or willing or wanted to perform. Now, a lot of people will say that Melissa was actually a clone of Avril's, and I understand why they're saying that, and I'm not saying that that's not entirely true, but I, I don't actually believe Melissa is a clone. Um, I think she literally is a body double. And this is very common in Hollywood. This is not something, there are a lot of people, I mean, I know from living in Hollywood, there are a lot of people that hire body doubles so that they can live a more peaceful life or throw off the paparazzi if they need to. This is super, super, super common. And we think about celebrities like, you know, rock stars like Avril Lavigne or Britney Spears. Yes, we know what they look like, but seeing a celebrity in person versus a photograph or a video is often very, very different. You know, you'll hear people meet people in real life and be like, wow, they're a lot shorter than I thought they were, or, or wow, they were a lot thinner than I thought they were, or fatter than I thought they were, or, you know, the, the, people always say, okay, you have this idea in your head of what the celebrity looks like. And then when you see them in person, sometimes what the camera is portraying is not necessarily what they totally look like. You got, you know what I'm saying? And so this idea of body doubles is big because a person can look kind of like the celebrity and still get away with it. Because when a person sees the body double as the celebrity, they've never seen the celebrity before anyway in real life. And so a lot of that stuff can be just brushed off. Like the fact that Melissa was an inch taller than Avril. Now, this was something that got me too. Because if Melissa had been a clone of Avril, some of their physical characteristics would be more identical. Yeah, but the fact that Melissa is like an inch taller, I know an inch doesn't seem like that much, but in height, an inch is quite noticeable. I mean, for women out there, like if you wear like three inch heels, it drastically changes your, your height, right? And it drastically changes the way you move. And so for one inch alone, like, yeah, that's, that's quite a difference. We also see that Melissa's personality is a lot more bubbly. Like I said, Avril Lavigne, when she first came on the scene, was very much like that punk rock tomboy. And now we have a very extrovert Avril. And then we have some of the big kickers. The height thing is kind of a big one, but it gets even more... Um, noticeable with things like mole placement and freckle placement. Now, yeah, you can have moles removed, of course, but like I have some moles and freckles that I've had my whole life. They don't really change. And there's been people who have gone and looked at pictures of Avril from 1999 and the Avril that we see now, and they see notable differences on the body of different freckles and different moles. Now, other things like other facial structures can be explained away through things like plastic surgery. And even though Avril Lavigne was and is a beautiful woman, I don't fault anybody who gets plastic surgery. I, I don't, you know, whatever makes you happy, you do, you do you boo. So some of the other stuff like the eyebrow line, that, that could be possibly maybe shifted through a rhinoplasty, a nose job, anything like that. We also look at the way makeup can contour someone's face to look a little bit different. I mean, there's a whole tutorials out there on YouTube where you can take a white girl like me and you do the right makeup and you can make me look like Beyonce with makeup. And so we kind of have to take that stuff with the face with a grain of salt, especially again, as I said, from 19 years old to a woman in her 30s now, there could have been some facial structure movement if she herself was not done growing at 18 years old. But some of the biggest indicators that this is not the same person are First of all, the handwriting, and second of all, the vocals. The handwriting completely changed from Avril's 2002 album to her 2004 album. Yet, Yes, I know as we grow, our handwriting does change, but for two years, there should be some similarities in the way she writes her name, the way she dots her I, the way she crosses her T's, and those changed. 
we also again hear it with the vocals i'm going to place a video down in the description box below from a bigger creator named sloan where he breaks down a deeper look into avril's vocals he actually plays some stuff overlapping each other and you can definitely tell that there is a different vocal range between the two different vocals you hear on the screen now, with that being said, yes, vocals can change. I understand that. That happened with Britney Spears. Britney Spears as a child. If you ever listened to her sing as a child, she had a freaking powerhouse voice. And then things happen, you know, drug abuse. I'm not saying that that's the case. But, you know, there, it's just an example of something that can change your vocal range. So in my opinion, things like handwriting, vocal range changing, and height make me scratch my head and go, yeah, this might be a different person. Now, you might be thinking, but we haven't actually talked about what, what supposedly happened to the real Avril, and I've kind of saved this for the end. And I want again to remember, remind you that her dad was heavily involved in a church as a bass player, and her grandfather was also a part of the Canadian government. Two red flags, in my opinion, that corroborate this story, especially looking at the way Avril Lavigne allegedly passed away. So as I said, when Avril Lavigne first got famous, she had a really, really hard time with the fame. She went through major depression, major anxiety. Um, I, I can only imagine, I mean, just having a YouTube platform, sometimes it gets overwhelming. I can't, I can't, I can only imagine, but I also can't imagine at the same time what that must feel like for the whole world to know who you are. I mean, her first album released in 2002 quickly hit number two in the United States Billboard Top 200 and hit number one in Canada, the United Kingdom and Australia. That's a lot. I mean, just think about that for a minute. You go from this kid who writes your own music, who loves music, and you're given these opportunities to do this for a living. Your bandmates, which we're going to get into, her bandmates had been her friends for a while. This is exciting just to do what you love. And then all of a sudden, you're making money doing what you love, but you're thrown in to this whirlwind of everyone wants your picture everyone's stalking you bothering you at just shops like i can understand how that can cause anxiety and depression but around the same time avril lavigne's grandfather also passed away now her i believe it was her paternal grandfather the same grandfather who was in the royal air force which you can correct me down in the comment section if you would like to and i just got in my gut I just got this like idea of like handler. I don't know if that's true or not. It's just kind of like my first gut instinct was, oh my God, her grandfather was a part of this. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not even going to divinate. I don't want anybody else to divinate. That's just, I'm just telling you what my gut instinct was. Well, he passed away. And apparently when he passed away, Avril Lavigne spiraled into a deeper depression and i've tried to maybe this is why i have some weird feeling like there was a handler situation because i've tried to rectify this in my head from a very logical place now i was extremely close to my grandmother she passed away my mom's mom when i was nine it was devastating but i was nine and life moves on my dad's parents recently just passed away it was devastating but i'm at peace with it it's strange to me that a 18 year old kid would take their own life because their grandfather passed away especially when they have their own parents especially if they're not financially dependent upon anybody but themselves and so to me it just felt like there was something strange about that relationship between avril and her grandfather again don't know if that's true or not this is just my suspicious mind because that was weird so the story goes with the conspiracy that the stress of being famous along with the passing of her grandfather, which again, if you're an 18 year old kid, you know your grandparents are gonna die one day, right? Like, you know your parents are gonna die one day. There's like a circle of life that's happening. So as sad as that is, and as, as hard as that is for people to process the loss of someone they love, I just don't, I don't, I can't, I can't 
in my head, I can't make that the reason why she decided to off herself. Like, I just can't. That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, let me know in the comment section if you're someone that felt like you were potentially because of a grandparent passing. I just, there's just something strange there. I don't, I don't care. I don't know. I don't, there's just something very weird about that. And he worked for the government. So I don't know. Anyway. So they say that after the stress of her album, the passing of her grandfather, that Avril Lavigne just could not handle it anymore. And so she, drum roll please. That's right. I really want to know what color that rope was. Was it red? Now, from my understanding, when it comes to the removal of one's own life, that is one of the hardest ways to do it. They say that the body will immediately fight back for oxygen as survival. Like it's, it's, things will break. You know, we see that with celebrities like Robin Williams on the doorknob, like, there, that's not possible like the body would have reacted that's like the hardest way to remove yourself from this world so we know that that's a huge signal from the club from the controllers is to do that to people and label it as now the story goes that after avril lavigne passed her record label was making so much money off of her that they decided just to turn Melissa, her body double, into her. Now, Sloan makes a really good point in his video down below. And I'd like to know your opinions on this. Because again, I don't believe that Melissa is a clone. If Melissa is a separate person from Avril Lavigne, then I believe she was a body double. Um, for many reasons. Again, some of the the the... the physicalities that are different would scream body double not clone and secondly again body doubles are super common in hollywood like people make a lot of money being body doubles right so it's you know you get to go have fun go do things and then you give a paycheck for it right but this is what sloan brought up and i also agree with is there a in my opinion and sloan didn't talk about this aspect of it but is there a level of like mind control with melissa because, like, I think about myself, if all of a sudden I I was somebody's, let's just say, like, let's say I was somebody's body double, and um, I was making a living just being this person's body double, but, but when I wasn't going to events every now and again to pretend to be this person, I was living my life as Bryce. I got friends as Bryce, I have friends, I have family, I have all these people in my life that know me as Bryce, and this is just some job I do to make a buck, Right? And then the person that I'm doubling for dies and their record label or agent say, hey, guess what, Bryce? Now you're going to be, you know, Sally forever. Now you have to just be Sally. I couldn't do that unless I was being mind controlled. Maybe threatened. I don't know. You know, that's where that's where it's a little weird. Like, how would this girl just give up her life like that? It's almost like there were two deaths. The one of the real Avril and the one of the Melissa. Now, this is where it gets a little strange, too, because I told you that this switch happened, allegedly, if it's true, if there really was a switch, it happened between the release of her first album and her second album. Avril's second album is called Under My Skin. Now it goes, the conspiracy goes, that Avril had already started working on the music for the second album, but it had not been completed when she passed away. So Melissa had to step in and finish the work. And people say that maybe by labeling the album Under My Skin, she was basically talking and telling you, telling everyone, subliminally, that she was Melissa, but Avril was under her skin. She was playing Avril. Now, there are a couple of songs that people point to called Slipped Away and Nobody's Home.
Now, again, if you watch the video in my description box from Sloan's breakdown, not only does he go through the differences and the contrast in their vocals, but he also breaks down the music video. And it's very, very interesting. Now, I don't have the type of equipment that Sloan has. I don't know how to do all that fancy stuff. So I'm just going to, again, tag that video down below. So I would really be interested if you watch his video and his dive into this to tell me what you think. Was Melissa or the controllers, rather, since the controllers do have to tell you the truth in some capacity, were they telling you subliminally through this album that Avril is no longer here and Melissa is now Avril? Speaking of that, there is a photograph from the second album, a press photograph, where Avril is standing with her fist up and she has the name Melissa written in marker on her hand. Why would Avril Lavigne do that? The thing about the role of body doubles, I know that there are some people that we, we kind of know the names of their body doubles because it's it's gotten out. Like we knew the Queen's body double, all that kind of stuff. But a lot of celebrities, you don't know who their body doubles are, what their real names are, because that's kind of the point, right? The point is that these are people who resemble the celebrity enough. They, slimber, they resemble the celebrity enough where they can stand in for the celebrity if need be, and no one will question it. And so if we were to go around telling everybody um, who are not we, because I don't I don't have a body double. So if the celebrities were to go around and tell people who the names of their body doubles, wouldn't that kind of um, blow the cover? The mystery of is that the body double or is it? I don't know. I don't know. I just think that'd be strange that you would ever allow the body double's name to get out there. I think that would be part of the NDA, right? Because I'm sure body doubles have to, to sign an NDA. They're not going to reveal that this is what they do like for a part-time gig. I mean, again, it sounds like a great gig. You just kind of get like maybe get a check for a couple of grand to go stand on a red carpet and smile and then go home and resume your life. I, I don't know. And so that picture with the name Melissa on the fist is is pretty telling too. But as we end this video, I'm going to end this video with the most compelling, most heartbreaking evidence that there is. I told you I was going to refer to Avril's bandmates. There was a guy named Evan. This breaks my heart. That was in Avril's band. Evan and Avril were like best friends. They were super, super, super close. Evan left the van in 2004. And when he left, he wrote a song that pretty much tells you what happened. Now, once again, if you go to Sloan's video, he breaks the whole song down for you. And it just seemed to me that this kid knew exactly what had happened to his best friend and he had no one to tell. And for those of us that have been in this great awakening for a long time, we understand why he couldn't tell anyone. If he had told anybody what had happened to his best friend, it probably the same thing would have happened to him. In my opinion, if Avril Lavigne passed away in 2002, 2003, in my opinion, I don't think she took her own life. It is my opinion, my suspicion, that perhaps maybe her family is a part of this. And maybe she was taken out. But yet money is still being made off of her name. Again, this is all my opinion. This is all alleged for entertainment purposes only. I don't. That's just what I think happened. Now, when I first ran across this conspiracy theory, it wasn't that long ago. I had no idea that this was a conspiracy theory. But I do remember thinking like, yeah, she did change. This kid changed. But, you know, that happens. People change. Right. Then when I started to dig, dig deep into it, I just a lot of this. There are a lot of red flags. Once again, I'm going to ask each and every one of you not to divinate on this. 
listen to your gut. If you think that something happened to her, maybe just share the video, spread the theory around. Because eventually there will be law and order and eventually justice will be served. Justice is never served by pulling tarot cards. Justice is served by evidence being turned in and the court of law doing what it needs to do. If Avril Lavigne was removed from this earth before her time, my heart and my love goes out to every single person, including Evan, that loved her. And I hope and pray that healing is possible and that justice is served. If Avril is still here and is the same person that just changed over time, I hope and pray that she's at peace with her life and that she's happy. Now, I do have to end this by saying that many people have asked Avril about these conspiracies and she has denied them. Of course she has. Why would she? Why would she confirm them? Anyway, but as always, I would love to hear your opinions down in the comment section below. Please be respectful. Again, Avril Lavigne is a human being just like you. People around her were human beings just like you. So let's be respectful. And, um, and yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.